Welcome on stage, Dr. John Halzerman. Uh, the important part of the talk is the second part, which is where I introduce the, what I think is really happening, the cloud thermostat uh, mechanism that is really con in control of the climate and not greenhouse gases. But before I get to that, I really need to comment uh, about some of the problems with the, the current models put forward by the IPCC which is that I believe that climate change is a total myth. The IPCC and its collaborators have attempted to identify the dominant process, uh, and I believe they botched it. They have been tasked to use computer models and observational data to determine some very important numbers. Uh, and these include the power imbalance, uh, of the Earth, mentioned earlier, the uh, feedback stability from natural mechanisms that control the Earth, uh, and in, an important number that goes into this is the Earth's uh, albedo uh, for it, in two parts, the clear sky and the cloudy sky uh, albedo, and the whole Earth together. I assert they have totally botched all of these tasks. I will assert that they have m totally misidentified the dominant process and correspondingly have made some, drawn incorrect conclusions uh, and made incorrect recommendations. It leads them to incorrectly calculate the strength of naturally occurring feedback mechanisms that I will calculate at the end of the talk. Uh, in turn, it leads to the false conclusion that these feedback mechanisms are quite marginal and that we are close to a tipping point. I don't believe that it's true at all. I assert that the dominant uh, process is the cloud thermostat mechanism, I will mention it, uh, and it provides the dominant, by far, the dominant feedback stability for the Earth. The feedbacks associated, the positive feedbacks associated with climate change are, or with uh, greenhouse gases are totally negligible by comparison. And so I can correspondingly uh, assert that there is no climate crisis. The climate is robustly stable against greenhouse uh, gases. Okay, so this is all is put together in a what I would consider a house of cards. Uh, and that the IPCC has not proven global warming. The observational data are fully consistent with no global warming. The, IPC, the computer modeling uses very strong, uh, flawed physics, and the, their claims of a power imbalance are based on dishonestly fudged data. I'm a little bit sad that I have to uh, say this in front of the public, in front of uh, fellow scientists that, uh, to accuse people of dishonestly fudging data, but I will show you exactly and pinpoint exactly where they did it. The uh, lack of a real global warming leads to a total house of cards, and I'll get into that in a minute. Okay, and without global warming, there is no climate crisis. Furthermore, I will show you where NOAA or dishonestly claims that we have an observed increase in extreme weather event frequency. Uh, that's also clearly bogus. Okay, uh, computer modeling. Uh, the computer modeling performed by the IPCC and its collaborators, uh, particularly mostly done by the Goddard Institute for Space Studies, is totally incapable of simulating the past climate over several decades. It can't even get the temperature history correct, but much worse, far more important, it's way off in getting the, the total reflectivity of the sunlight and the, the total albedo of the Earth. The computer modeling is even worse, and I believe there is a, something very, very wrong with the physics that the uh, 
the, the cloudy sky albedo appears to be wrong by a factor of two. OK, regarding the observational data, they're fully consistent, fully consistent with no global warming. And so correspondingly, there's no climate. The reports of, that, of uh, uh, net global warming are dishonestly fudged. Well, so, OK, this is, it is based on several uh, sources, satellite uh, radiometry, ocean heat content, uh, and these two measures are grossly in uh, uh, disagreement with each other. And I'm not the first whistleblower on this. Trenberth and uh, Fasulo earlier have pointed this out. Uh, that, that the, and there is no data closure. There's no way of connecting the two. Many of the people who actually analyzed the satellite data spe specifically said that it's, and the ocean heat content, the actual workers in the field, the, the grunts actually collecting the data, admit up front that these two methodologies are totally incapable of measuring the power imbalance for the Earth with the required uh, accuracy. And this fact is exacerbated by the fact that all of the various numbers are rapidly varying by large numbers. And the fudged report, uh, uh, the, the data are fudged to get around this. There are other important issues that I believe have been missed. The oceans are the big cl cloud factory. 70% of the Earth is ocean. And of the sunlight that falls on the ocean, 73% of it is used not for warming the Earth, not for warming the ocean, but simply for evaporating water and making clouds. This is the dominant process uh, that is controlling. The, that's where the energy is going. Uh, now, Ramanathan et al. in 1987, when he was analyzing the Irby satellite data, divided the, sky, the Earth up into two different areas. Uh, the clear sky area and the cloudy sky area. Uh, more recently, King et al. have done some very beautiful work analyzing the Terra and Aqua uh, satellite data. And they point out that there's a huge difference in the cloud covers over land and over ocean. So really, there are four important areas which have been totally ignored by all of the reports. There is the clear and cloudy sky over land and the clear and cloudy sky over the oceans. And since the oceans are 70% of the Earth, dominant uh, numbers. Now, the IPCC's reports totally ignore the fluctuations of the cloud cover, which are totally dominating, and they are what are in control. If you look at the, okay, the clear sky and the cloudy sky uh, albedos, and you just simply apply conservation of energy, you find that the, or the t clear total albedo and the clear sky albedo, you can work backwards to get the cloudy al sky albedo. That is clearly wrong by a factor of two. OK. So the first important task was to uh, calculate and measure the Earth's power balance. Uh, OK, what is it? That's the, 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 sunlight, the power in minus the power out. The, the, uh, there are two components of the power, of the power in and just the sunlight that's incident on the Earth. There are two components of the uh, power that's out. It's the sunlight that gets reflected and the thermal heat that gets re-radiated. I call this sacred task because trillions of dollars are based on getting this number right. And they haven't done it. The power uh, imbalance uh, has, I will give you a house of cards argument that forebodes climate change and a, uh, and a climate apocalypse. And I will assert that the, there is no global 
uh, have not proven global warming, and so the whole power uh, uh, house of cards collapses. Okay, the second uh, is to measure the strength of the feedback stability. Okay, there are various uh, mechanisms pre uh, present. Uh, obviously, they are because the Earth's uh, temperature and climate have been incredibly stable over years. Uh, now, the IPCC scapegoats greenhouse gases are the dominant uh, courses. The IPCC uh, and especially Sherwood et al. Uh, have uh, claimed that, that these are insufficient and that we are uh, very close to a tipping point. Uh, it gives you effectively a thermal runaway of the Earth. I think that's total nonsense, and I will show you in a minute how to calculate it correctly. Okay, so I will show you that the dominant process is the cloud thermostat mechanism and assert, again, that there is no climate crisis. Okay, so what's this house of cards I'm talking about? They claim with great certainty, this is the IPCC and all of its contributors, that the Earth has a proven power imbalance, that there's more sunlight coming in than power, uh, lost power going out. Okay, uh, more power, okay, it's basically uh, Gauss's conservation law. If you have more energy coming in than is going out, you will have an energy buildup. So that is, has become the, 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 the definition of global warming. Okay, that, in turn, that global warming in turn leads to a climate change. Climate change leads to an increased frequency of extreme weather events. Increased frequency of extreme weather events leads to a global ap apocalypse, uh, a catastrophe, and a climate crisis. NOAA claims that they already observed this. I will show you that that is totally bogus. The IPCC claims that this uh, power imbalance is due to a buildup of greenhouse gases. I, I further assert that you, the world must spend literally trillions of dollars to limit uh, carbon production, greenhouse gas production, CO2 buildup. So I assert that the net warming power imbalance is not proven. Okay, first let's look at the, the computer modeling. Uh, it's done by the uh, uh, Goddard uh, Space uh, Institute of Space Studies in New York, which is where I actually wrote my PhD thesis. The, uh, the studies that I will look at are the so-called CMIP-5. They were most commonly uh, quoted. Uh, now, I'm not the first to be critical of these. Uh, Steve Coonan just published a recent uh, bestseller book, Unsettle, What Climate Science Tells Us and Why It Matters, and he was the first, actually, to call this to, to, to my attention, uh, just how bad their predictions actually are. It's the same set of computer modeling. It can't even get anywhere close to simulating the Earth's albedo. Uh, it's, 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 it's totally terrible. Uh, Okay, so this is a, actually, it was a, this is on the back page uh, of Physics Today, I mean, of the uh, back page of uh, American Physical Society News. Uh, it was published in uh, the IPCC's uh, AR5 report in 2013. Okay, the, these early curves here, the, 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 the gray curves are history. They can't even simulate the history of, 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 of the temperature. This is the temperature anomaly, whatever that means. They never tell you what that means. They just show you, okay, here's an anomaly, and so you can't apply sigma t to the fourth to it, so you get to actually cross-check uh, how much power are we talking about. Okay, so not only can they not simulate the past, if you can't trust their simulation of the past, uh, these are the variety of models that they have for it. None of them can actually, okay, the black curve is what they claim history actually has been. Uh, if they can't trust the uh, history, how can you trust the predictions? Uh, an important question is, what is the definition 
that we're using. Well, rather than the uh, temperature, uh, one needs to really get cause and effect in the right order. The power imbalance is what, in theory, is causing a global, uh, global warming. So one needs to look directly at the power imbalance rather than the, uh, the temperature history. The temperature history, at least the measurements, there are huge variations from one spot over Earth, but most of them are over land. And 70% is ocean, where it's very hard to measure. So in the, the land measurements, all are suffering from the heat, urban, island effects. So uh, the IPCC, in fact, even agrees with this and says, OK, we're going to define global warming as a net uh, power imbalance, more power coming in than uh, going out. OK, next important issue question is, what is albedo? Well, it is a very confusing term to many. It's just a shorthand measure of of the total reflectivity of light, of sunlight. It's, uh, it's the ratio of the uh, outgoing so, uh, solar radiation to the incoming uh, solar radiation. Once it's outgoing, it's lost, and it can't heat the Earth anymore. So measuring and calculating it uh, essentially is equivalent to measuring the, calculating the Earth's albedo. OK, this is a uh, paper by Stevens et al. in 2015. Stevens has uh, many of these papers, and with different et al. associated with each one of them. Uh, Willie Soon earlier showed this. OK, this is a direct copy from uh, their uh, Stevens et al. 2015 paper showing the CMIP, all the colored curves are the CMIP-5 uh, attempts. Now, I have multiplied albedo times the solar constant, 340 watts per square meter. And so that gives me a total power. That means that the fluctuations here are the order of 10 watts per square meter. Remember, the imbalance that they claim is, is half a watt or less. Uh, so they can't get anywhere closer than 10 watts. 20 times their, their claimed imbalance. OK, the black curve is the uh, measurements from the uh, Terra and Aqua uh, satellites. Uh, the, uh, one should notice it is not sinusoidal. So I've shown you the, the, uh, the, added, the power. Uh, so that, that, that is consistent with the, what's been reported over and over again the order of 100 watts per square meter of, of the Earth's uh, surface area. OK, now, uh, okay, that's multiplied by the solar constant. I will point out <laughs> the solar constant is not constant. OK, uh, so it's grossly incapable of, of simulating it. OK, and so as an experimentalist, I would say this comparison with theory and experiment totally as a total flop. OK, now, if you get the outgoing solar power, uh, reflected solar power, that reflects immediately into the, 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 the power imbalance. So we got at least 10 to 15 watts. And the IPCC is uh, claiming 0.7 or earlier 0.6 watts per square meter. This is an important number. That will show up over and over again. And I'll get to that in a minute. Okay, so here is uh, again from Stevens. Here is the actual variation that he shows of the solar constant. This is due to the ellipticity of the Earth's orbit. Sometimes it's closer to the sun, sometimes it's farther away, and that gives you an added roughly 22 watts per square meter uh, power variation. OK, so I assume that the, oops, I'm going to show that the uh, warming is defined as more power in than power out. I think I mentioned that out has two components. One is the sunlight energy that's directly reflected back out into Earth. That's about 100 watts per square meter. The other component is the far infrared. It's about 240 watts. OK, the, I, 
the IPC, the climate scientists refer to this as short wave and long wave radiation. It means far infrared and the full spectrum of sunlight. Okay, so should be easy. Uh, if you want to measure a power imbalance, you get, there are three numbers you got to measure. There's the total power in. Uh, that's just uh, looking up at the sun, the, uh, the sunlight. Uh, and looking down at the Earth, how much reflected sunlight is there and how much uh, heat is being re-radiated by the Earth. It's actually a much harder problem than it sounds. It's not just measuring these numbers and subtracting because these numbers are wildly fluctuating in, uh, in time. They're irreproducibly fluctuating. The cloud cover varies quite dramatically. The total amount of sunlight reflected by the clouds is varying quite dramatically. And these numbers are so big, that the, and the difference is very, very small. So it's very, very hard to actually make such a measurement. The observers themselves say, uh, you know, this is such a tough problem, we don't think we can actually do it. it we don't have the, the technology available to actually measure to the required accuracy. So there, what has been employed? There are two set, important uh, sets of satellites. The earliest one is the Irby uh, satellite that went up. Uh, and then there was a very nice pair of satellites, Terra and Aqua uh, satellites, that were in solar sy uh, synchronous orbits. And they, so they went around exactly the same orbit uh, once a day, every day. And there's also the ocean heat content uh, data. And that was measured by the Argo buoy chain and also XBT uh, water sampling by, uh, by ships. And then there was also another ground, the BSRN, the Baseline Surface Radiation Network that looked uh, simply had uh, pyroheliometers looking up at the sky. Okay, uh, th these all <laughs> different agreements, and it was shown earlier that the Irby satellite was difference was huge uh, on the uh, compared to the Terra and Aqua satellites. Okay, uh, there are in most of these cases there are huge gaps in the data. Something goes wrong and they don't collect the data and or they just don't have enough money to analyze all the data. Uh, and we will show you that none of the reported data actually show a convincing uh, warming power imbalance. And worse yet, of the data that have been analyzed, they just simply fudge the numbers. And they will change what if you just simply subtract their numbers uh, their number of subtraction shows there's no warming. They just simply write on there on the, the output that it, there is warming. Okay, so where do you get the numbers? Well, most of these are, are all on what's called a, what I call a power flow map. Saw one earlier. I'll show you a whole bunch of them, and they're generally reported at the to uh, top of the atmosphere altitude. Uh, and there's, so all you have to do is pull, look at the power flow map, pull the numbers, and do the subtraction. And if you don't believe me, don't believe they're fudging, I urge you, pull the, the graphs out and do the subtraction yourself. Okay, so here's the typical uh, calculation. We have roughly 340 watts of incident uh, shortwave power or sunlight power coming in, 100 watts reflected. 240 watts of outgoing long wave power, and plus, minus, minus, we get an imbalance. Uh, okay, now there are a couple of important tricks in doing this you need to notice. They also, if you have error bars associated with each of these numbers, the standard method, I re personally recommend Bevington analysis of. Uh, <laughs> Uh, experimental data for scientists and engineers, a marvelous book. But the standard method is you just, it's the root mean square uh, sum of the individual errors. And what does this tell you? There's an immediate cross check 
that should uh, uh, catch your attention. Everyone, that, 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 that the total imbalance should always be bigger than every single one of the individual uh, errors. And then if you have the imbalance is less than the error, error bar, then you can, uh, then there's no global warming. If it's greater, then you can claim global warming. Okay, so the earliest data, Stevens et al., 1981, and then what was followed by Ramanathan in 1987. Uh, uh, Stevens et al. said there was plus 9 watts of warming, plus or minus 10. Uh, I add the numbers, I get to 6.8. Ramanathan doesn't, uh, doesn't put on the final digit, and he gets zero. There, his numbers end up to minus 3. And analyzing the same data, they only took data for portions of four months. And remember that the output power was not sinusoidal. The, IP, the National Academy report reviewed that, and their comment was, the observations do not meet quality standards. OK, this was up, uh, shown before Loeb et al. in 2012. He admits, this is a direct quote from the paper, limitation of the satellite data is their inability to provide absolute measure of the net top of the atmosphere radiation imbalance to the required accuracy level. So he correspondingly says, OK, so satellites don't work, or at least the Irby satellite doesn't work. So he just goes and arbitrarily replaces uh, Ramanathan's numbers. Now, both of these have huge data gaps, terribly undersampled uh, data. Uh, and so Loeb et al. just simply re, re, uh, re, uh, showed the numbers and said, OK, we do have a net warming. OK, and the way they did this was they followed uh, Hansen's uh, recommendations, 2005 and 2011, who said, well, you really got to look at the uh, ocean heat content. That's where the accurate numbers can come from. Now, this is before El Nino uh, current flows in this very complicated structure of the ocean, and we had just a, a very sparse buoy chain trying to temperature measure the ocean heat content uh, just by measuring temperatures. And some of it was just done by ship-based uh, guys throwing uh, buckets overboard and measuring the temperature uh, with a thermometer. Loeb et al. adjusted the numbers. And so they here they, here they what they got from the Irby uh, Earth Radiation uh, Experiment, uh, UREB, I think, I forget what it is, uh, satellite, the ocean heat content. Uh, and finally, they come up from the ocean heat content with this important number, 0.64 plus or minus 0.11. This is the bad penny that keeps f coming back. By changing the numbers, they're admitted that, yes, we're fudging the results. And these are the numbers that they got. OK, I add these numbers, and here's what I get. 0.5 plus or minus 3.9. OK, amazo, we get this 0.6. Now, at least what they did was they, they raised the error bar a little bit from 0.11 to 0.4. OK, so they admit that they fudged the numbers. Uh, and, but they don't admit that they can't do arithmetic. Uh, they do not show where they got their, their error bars from. And if you look at it, it immediately fails this uh, error bar cross-check that I mentioned. OK, so here is their power balance uh, flow diagram. So here's sunlight coming in. Here's uh, reflected sunlight uh, going out. Here's the... Uh, uh, emitted, re-emitted uh, infrared, 
and, and they're trying to compare it with the CMIP-5 calculations. Their numbers on the graph just don't even add. OK. Uh, Le Coyier was one of the co-authors. He apparently, I guess, uh, this may be perhaps a minority report. Uh, he went back and reanalyzed the ocean heat content uh, data. Uh, and he, so now he did shift the numbers. He didn't uh, call them adjustments. He called them uh, minimizing constraints. He still got uh, similar numbers, but we got his, all of his numbers show zero warming from ocean heat content. Here is his uh, Le Courier et al. There, here's the outgoing solar, uh, outgoing heat. Here's incoming solar, 340 plus or minus 0.5. Outgoing solar, 102, point, uh, 102 uh, plus or minus 4. This number will keep uh, recurring. This is the ev power for evaporating of water. I'll get, get back to that in, in a minute. OK, so in 2010, Trenberth et al. looked at this. Uh, Trenberth and Fasulo were kind of the original whistleblowers on all of this. And they were pointing out that you're doing an apples and oranges comparison if you're trying to look at the ocean heat content, because that's occurring at the surface of the Earth. And whereas the, the, if we we're in theory doing a top of the atmosphere uh, calculation. So, the, uh, so if you want to try to mix up surface and top of the atmosphere, you need to know what's going on in between. Trenberth and Vesulo uh, did not <laughs> agree. Uh, and so they were very, it was, and it was Hansen who was really pushing the ocean heat content data. But what Trenberth and Fasulo point out is that there's a huge missing energy balance. And they keep asking the, the simple question, where did the energy go? Left it unanswered. Uh, there was a response from Hansen et al. in 2011. And he says, oh, it's just satellite calibration errors. OK, so Le Coyier was one of the co-authors with Stevens. And so we had a major discrepancy between the two. So they get together just the two authors in 2015, Stevens and Le Coyier. And they come up with this absolutely amazing uh, paper. It reminds me of the line from, from Monty Python and the Holy Grave, Grail. Yeah, we did put the carrot on our nose, but she's still a witch. <laughs> OK, so in, in the paper, they say that they're both right. <laughs> that yes, they're, uh, they're both in agreement. And that guess what? It's 0.6 plus or minus 0.4, the bad penny. Uh, OK. And they admit that the choice between OHC uh, and uh, satellite data was made in a totally ad hoc fashion, and that they had absolutely no reason, no, uh, reason to support one approach over the other. Those are just direct quotes from their paper. So here is their power flow diagram, same set of numbers. Now that each the top line has two numbers, one from satellites and one from OHC data. OK, so here's what they come up with. Here's the OHC data. Here's the, uh, the Terra and Aqua uh, satellite data. And for both of them, add up to 0.6 plus or minus 0.4. OK, I add up the numbers. And I get 0 plus or minus 5.6, showing no convincing warming where they say, oh, yes, we have lots of warming, and our, our, our errors are very good. OK. Then time regresses a little bit. And Vild et al. in 2019, followed by IPCC itself, uh, cementing as of total approval in their AR6 
a, a 2021 report. All of these numbers are fudged. Okay, uh, so Bill et al. They report a new uh, clear sky or cloud-free sky measurement from the baseline uh, surface radiation network. Uh, and they, this allows them to calculate a clear sky uh, albedo. Okay, and so then AR6 just simply took their picture and made a, a, a near perfect copy, except they changed the numbers and they made the fudges worse. Here are their, these are just copied directly out of their papers. Okay, this one is Ville et al. This one is AR6. Again, here we have 340, 100, 239 uh, going out. Now, remember these numbers here. These are important. This is the to total heat from evaporation, 82 watts and 160 watts absorbed. Uh, uh, they'll be important in a minute. Okay, so here's their arithmetic. Okay, so here's Bill Dead Hall's numbers. I calculated 3.5 plus or minus 3.6, no warming. Guess what they get? 0.6 plus or minus 0.4. Okay, oh well, AR6, adjust that a little bit, 0.7. But they dropped the error bars now by point down to half of that. And it's actually, they dropped it by a factor of four because they're here, they are claiming two sigma error bars. Uh, again, our bad penny keeps showing uh, up. And again, the RMS uh, error bar check, error sum check doesn't work. Uh, the arithmetic is fudged. And okay, now they have a new trick for, for fudging that I hadn't seen before. This is really cute. Where you'll notice that they report not error bars, but they give you two numbers with no de decimal point behind them. And so they, the round up error is 0.5 watts, which is the sa same order of magnitude as the, uh, as the net difference that they're calculating. Okay. Now, there are two important observations that just get in passing. The cloudy uh, sky albedo, we can calculate from that because we have now the total whole sky and the clear sky albedo. It gives you an error by a factor of two, and the 73% of the sunlight is used for warming. Okay, here, how do we do this? There's a simple energy conservation theorem, actually, CESS found, notice this back in 1976, that it says that the all sky, when you have a multiplicity of regions, in this case two, clear sky and cloudy sky, that the total albedo is just the area uh, uh, fraction uh, weighted sum of the two albedos. Okay, so we can know from the, just from looking at that, the, the total sky, uh, albedo the whole sky albedo is 0.3. The clear sky albedo is uh, 0.33. So correspondingly, if you, and, and everybody ag agrees that the total average cloud fraction of the Earth is about 0.67. And so this gives you this number 0.36. For, that's the reflectivity of bright white clouds. That's clearly wrong by at least a factor of two. Okay, so the other question is, what does the sunlight actually do? Most people say, well, it warms the earth, right? Well, that may be true over land, but land is only 30% of the earth. Most of the area, 70% is ocean. So. As virtually all of the exposed water on the earth is in the ocean. Not, I mean, there are a few big lakes, great lakes. Like, okay, remember we had 160 watts uh, that was absorbed. 
So 70% of that is ocean absorbed, so it's 112 watts. We had 82 watts used for evaporating water. That ratio is 73%. That comes straight off of AR6. OK, the final total fudge was made by NOAA. And this was a Physics Today article by uh, about they, were, they claim that the, uh, there's an observed uh, increase in the frequency of extreme weather events. It was by Lubchenko, who is not a scientist, is an undersecretary of commerce, and Thomas Carl, who was a NOAA director of the whole, their whole science program. So presumably, the director of the NOAA's climate science program can get the very best data that NOAA has to offer. Okay, they assert uh, that, okay, they construct a, clim a weather climate extremes index. It's some sort of, an, they don't give you exactly how they calculate it, but it's some sort of a numerical composite measure of extreme weather events. These include hot spells, cold spells, droughts, floods, landfalling hurricanes. Conspicuously absent from the list is EF3 plus tornadoes. And as Steve Coonan points out in his book, well, that's because uh, they can't put them in there because that was actually decreasing and it would show the opposite of what they wanted to show. Uh, and they claim, they assert that the frequency has obviously increased over the last three decades. Okay, there is their graph. I learned from two great experimentalists, Charlie Towns and Louis Alvarez at Cal. Uh, <laughs> Louis Alvarez would look at that and say, flattest line I ever saw. And Charlie Towns would look at that and say, I don't see in the data what you're telling me I'm supposed to see. <laughs> Okay, so I took those data. Uh, no scientist uses bar graphs. Okay, they all use point graphs, and so I just traced that data set directly, and I did it did it twice, once on the transparency, and I flipped one of them, so that now time is increasing to the left. If you look carefully, you'll see there are mirror images of each other. I won't tell you which is which, but you have to look at this and tell me. Yes, it is obvious in the last three decades that there's a, a huge increase in the extreme weather event frequency. If you can't tell them apart, I assert that's a totally phony claim. Okay, so what are the conclusions from all this? Okay, they claim a net warming energy imbalance. I claim that the what the that those I assert that those claims are totally false. This is the net warming imbalance is the definition. And so there is no energy crisis, uh, no uh, uh, energy imbalance crisis without global uh, warming. There's no, uh, there's no climate crisis will not occur. Okay, so the IPCC is based its warming claims on computer modeling. Uh, and on various observational met modalities. The computer models are grossly flawed. They also based on fudged data. Okay, so the modeling predictions are totally unreliable. And if you can't even explain the past, how are you going to predict, uh, reliably predict the future? None of the observational modalities uh, convincingly shows that there is a global warming. Okay, the IPCC, has, those kept going over and over and over again, this bad penny showing up. This can't be done accidentally. This has got to be dishonest. I'm embarrassed to say this, but, uh, and if you don't believe me, just check my arithmetic. There's, okay, moreover, I assert that there's a sum there's a very serious factor of two missing in the calculation of the cloudy sky albedo. albedo. I suspect this is much worse. Uh, I don't have a tractic down where it is. I don't have access to the data. So, so the, and I mentioned that the, the NOAA has claimed that it's already caused 
a, 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 a extreme weather events, that's clearly wrong. So I consider this good news or great news. What you have heard from the IPCC is wrong. There is no uh, climate crisis. The Earth is not in peril. I think that's a good thing. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> and the bad news is, this is a total hoax.